I want to thank The Economist for organizing this conference and inviting me to participate. I'm delighted to join my uh, fellow uh, panelists. I have one comment about the previous session, particularly what Mr. Elroy talked about in terms of uh, the scientific uh, and uh, R&D proficiency uh, that you will encounter in Israel. Uh, when I was Assistant Secretary of State for Oceans and International Environmental and Scientific Affairs some 35 years ago, one of the uh, uh, tasks that went along with that uh, job was to be the honorary co-chair of the Binational Research and Development Foundation between the United States and Israel. It was uh, uh, funded uh, by uh, a debt that Israel had to the United States, and we got legislation, $100 million, and instead of repaying the debt uh, to the U.S. Treasury, we got legislation to establish this foundation to promote joint uh, research and development between Israel and the United States. And the one condition was that the research be done in Israel and that it be done between the United States and Israeli scientists. And there's a number of well-known companies that, uh, whose creation was the result of this collaboration. So I, I'm very, I mean, f f for, for many decades, I think, uh, Israel's been a pioneer in this field, and I'm sure uh, they're ever more proficient in these activities today than they were then. I notice that many of uh, my generation of Israeli diplomats, when I go to Tel Aviv or Jerusalem, they all give me their cards, and they're all vice presidents and uh, chairman of uh, high-tech companies. So uh, something's happening there <laughs> that is to their benefit, obviously. And I can think of nothing better than enhancing cooperation between Greece, Cyprus, and Israel which is also a dramatic change from what things used to be uh, in uh, diplomatic relations in that part of the world. When I served in Thessaloniki, Greece, back in the 1970s as a consul general of the United States, the Greek friends that I had were always telling me that our foreign policy depended too much on Israel, and they were rather, uh, I would say, skeptical and antagonistic to our cooperation with Israel. I don't think that is the case today. And if I were to leave you with one message uh, this morning, uh, I, I would like to say that I believe the United States uh, as a society and its government uh, encourages and stands strongly behind the cooperation that we are seeing take place at this moment uh, between the democracies of the Eastern Mediterranean. This is a new geopolitical development, and I think it's an extremely uh, positive one. Uh, I don't think this conference would have been possible uh, several years ago. First, because uh, Greece is emerging from uh, the financial crisis and uh, is no longer uh, totally uh, preoccupied with its dire economic and financial situation. Two, three years ago, uh, I don't think that there would have been the bandwidth to concentrate in Greece to concentrate on promoting this type of cooperation, and I think that's a very positive development. Secondly, there have been these major uh, discoveries of uh, natural gas and oil in the uh, eastern uh, Mediterranean, the one of the, the most recent, recent of which was the discovery in Block 10 by Exxon Mobil of uh, large uh, <coughs> deposits of natural gas in the Cyprus uh, exclusive economic uh, zone. So uh, this, I think, is a very significant development. And the more energy opportunities that are identified, I think the greater the impetus for collaboration uh, between the various countries involved. Uh, more, bro more broadly, I would say that the democracies in the eastern uh, Mediterranean have intensified their consultation and cooperation on a wide range of issues. And I think it's important that it not be exclusively on the issue of energy. I think that uh, relationships tend to be healthier and better if they are broadly based. And I, I get the sense uh, that that, in fact, 
uh, is happening. And as I mentioned already, they've now been joined in that by uh, the United States uh, of America. And I think that uh, uh, Secretary of State Michael Pompeo's uh, meeting on March 20th in, in Jerusalem with the uh, leaders of Israel, Cyprus, and Greece uh, was a seminal uh, development. Uh, in this context, uh, there's also uh, been uh, an improvement in United States-Greek uh, uh, relations, uh, especially with the resolution, the recent uh, resolution of the so-called name issue, we won't go into the details, uh, regarding uh, North uh, Macedonian, but that had been, for a number of years, uh, cast a bit of a, a, a shadow, if you will, uh, on uh, the United States-Greek relationship. And so I consider that to have been both a significant development for our bilateral relations, but also for the Western Alliance uh, and the Balkan Peninsula. As for Cyprus, uh, I think uh, the United States supports the ambitions to uh, exploit these newly discovered uh, natural resources, uh, as well as to build uh, energy partnerships with uh, Israel, Greece, uh, and Egypt. Uh, we mustn't forget Egypt. It's not uh, exactly a democracy, but I think it also is important that Egypt not feel isolated or excluded from the international community. I think there was a period of time, particularly during a previous administration, uh, when that happened in United States foreign policy, and I think that uh, may have been uh, a bit of a problem. Uh, eventually, these developments can uh, both help uh, uh, increase uh, critically uh, needed energy uh, supplies and importantly create alternative energy resources for Western European and other markets. I'd say, uh, and to uh, be brief here, in short, uh, this is a very help hopeful period uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean New oil and gas discoveries combined with strengthened partnerships, especially amongst democracies of the region, offer the prospect of a considerably more uh, prosperous, stable, and peaceful Eastern Mediterranean. Thank you. Thank you.